Welcome to Digital Asset News. Take a top stories in crypto and bring it on a bite-sized piece. It's today, just as the thumbnail asks, what would happen if traditional equities or stocks just took a big nosedive? Would it bring down Bitcoin and the entire crypto digital asset market? So we're going to take a look at what uh, Bitcoin and stocks. We're going to talk about getting ready now through education because that's so important to get that ready right now before everything hits the fan. We're also going to talk about blockchain gaming and NFT TVs. And before we get into that, we're going to get into the market itself. Before we get into that, let's take a look at this nifty meme that I put out on Twitter, which is Karen. And I did this because it seems like a lot of people, uh, they've been asking me and questioning like, hey, I heard on Twitter, I heard on YouTube, I heard on Instagram, I heard on TikTok that once we get out of 2021 and everybody sells off for taxes, then everybody's going to get everything into a row and they're going to start uh, 2022 Q1 off with the bang and we're going to start to see moons and Lambos and everything else. And it doesn't work like that. So right now I know everybody wants to get rich fast. Uh, this is not a get rich quick overnight. This is a get rich uh, financially stable over a long time, but it's not a get rich quick scheme, crypto and digital assets. The same theories apply. And what we really need to do is get everything together so we know what is about to happen by taking a look at not just what's going on to our crypto market, but what's going on in the whole macro ecosystem as far as finances. So uh, first, let's take a look at my favorite market, which is crypto and digital assets. So just so you know, right now we're going sideways. It's uh, still 2.2 trillion, somewhere around there as far as total market cap. We're down almost a point. Bitcoin price is 46.4. Everything else is down around the board. There is a couple of different cryptos that are up. Congratulations if you're one of those guys. But the sentiment, as far as sentiment, we're using Trade the Chain, link in the description, is still pretty darn high. I think people feel like this is going to be a good year. But remember, it's not about feelings. It's about data and the things that are actually going on uh, around us. So what I like to do is there's a great newsletter I get every day. It's called The Daily Upside. And uh, there's a link in the description. It's a 100% free newsletter. All you got to do is sign up for it and they just give you information. And what I like to do is just take a look at what exactly is going on. So they tell you like super easily, hey, after a blockbuster year, well, here's the three points. After a blockbuster year, markets are facing a complicated outlook. Nuclear energy is poised to be labeled green and sustainable by the EU. They're also taking a look at natural gas. That would actually help with our ESG problem that uh, some people have with Bitcoin and different uh, proof of works. And 5G network deployment hits another bout of turbulence. So what's important here is pretty much those first two that we talked about. And when I take a look at this and I'm like, okay, this is what's going on in a macro environment because we're not in a fishbowl. Crypto is not in a fishbowl. We actually have other components and institutional investors are here. So here's what's happening. Markets face a tougher 2022 after last year's record run. The S&P 500 has efficiently doubled since New Year's 2018. Doubled since 2018, which remember, traditional finance, equities, stocks, they don't double very quickly. It's a very slow growth process. So when this happens, it's like a big thing over there. I mean, in crypto, we call that a Tuesday. We don't really care. But here, it's a big thing. And is it sustainable? The first time the index has produced a three-year return of 100% since March 2000. And now, as far as last year, the S&P hit 70 record highs. 2021, 70 record highs. For the first time, every single S&P 500 sector posted double-digit gains. And 8 out of 11 rose at at least 20%. To cap off the year, the S&P 500 turned in the best December since 2010, which is kind of interesting because we had kind of a junk December. I think we all remember December and crypto. We were hoping for a big bang. Didn't really happen. S&P did pretty well. To cap off the year, the S&P, oh, I already said that, early 2022 will likely feature some hawkish pronouncements from the Federal Reserve, fourth quarter earnings reports that underline ballooning inflation, and the Fed tapering asset purchases. So you have to remember right now, what is going on in the macro environment is that traditional finance had a pretty massive run. Can they keep it up? And if they can't keep it up and we see a decline because of the Fed is starting to taper, then they may, and they've already talked about this, about raising rates, interest rates, what will happen with the stock market? Well, it'll probably not do as well as 2021 because it was such a monstrous year. And if that's the fact, and we know that institutional players are here. What's going to happen with our market? And I got a little concerned until I took a look at this great article 
uh, why portfolio managers will need to look at altcoins in 2022. And actually, this goes along the lines with what we talked about yesterday in yesterday's video about hedge fund managers need to get on board with crypto when time is up for them, actually. And this was written by uh, Lawrence uh, Louis Tin and managing editor. And he did a great job here uh, with this opinion piece. And just to break this down in the simplest way possible, you've got four lines here. You got green, red, black, and gold. Okay. And then for this right here, where it says uh, the, the black line, it's all about correlation. And this is the correlation between Bitcoin and the S&P 500. For correlations, anything that's positive, especially like up to one, means that it is doing the exact same thing. So if you have something that's a very, the more positive it gets, the more correlated it is. Meaning if Bitcoin and S&P 500 were at a one, that means if the S&P went up, Bitcoin would go up. And now if it was at a zero, it means it doesn't really do too much together. And if it's at a negative number and the lowest is negative one, it means it does the exact opposite. So in this case, if it was, if Bitcoin and the S&P 500 was at negative one, then that means that if uh, the S&P went up, then Bitcoin would go straight down. That is negative, zero, and positive. And to get that, you can just see here that in the black, it's really not as correlated as some might think, even me. Uh, I talk about how there's a little bit more correlation than there used to be. And I thought it was a little bit being more correlated, but not so much. So over the last year, the correlation coefficient between Bitcoin and the S&P 500 peaked at around 0.31. So yes, it is positive, but not too much. In June, the coefficient was negative 0.04, meaning there was statistically no relationship between the price of U.S. stocks and Bitcoin. So why is this important? Well, this is important just because of what I talked about. If the stocks start to crash or they take a pullback, maybe this is the time for some of these players to go, you know what, we knew this was gonna come, so where do we put our money? And bonds have, do, have done nothing for us. I mean, it's pretty much negative, uh, so negative yield. And if the, crypt, and if the uh, stocks aren't doing so much, where can we put our types of funds? Well, we can do the US dollar, but I mean, there's this thing called inflation, that's just eating everything up alive. But there's other, other different asset class that's looking pretty good. Why don't we put it into crypto? now? If it was me, and this is years ago, I might think about real estate, but real estate's on fire and it is going up tremendous amounts. So I can't even say that you can put your money into uh, traditional uh, real estate because there's just the price is going up so high. So what do you have? You got crypto at its paltry 2.23 trillion market cap, which is absolutely nothing. So that's just one thing to look at. Now, going forth, it says uh, Bitcoin's correlation with gold. Uh, the correlation between Bitcoin and gold saw its 2021 peak in early January at 0.3. So in actuality, there was a little bit of correlation, which was surprising to me. The lowest point was negative 0.18 back in August, and it's a measly 0.07, so not really correlated whatsoever, which makes sense to me. I didn't think it was going to be that well correlated. And if the cryptocurrency isn't trading with stocks or gold, surely it's tight with bonds. Nope. That line is sticking to zero. So bonds, which I don't know why anybody would get into that these days, especially that uh, traditional 60-40 split, 60 stock, 40 bonds. I think that's dead in the water. And then uh, lastly, it talks about the upside for a portfolio manager. And this is where uh, it's nailed. What he's talking about here, this really makes sense. The upside for a portfolio manager is that low correlations with other asset classes make crypto something that must be at least considered for a portfolio to boost diversification. And we talked about this yesterday, and we're gonna take a look at another uh, topic, but they need to start looking at these things because as time goes on, what would it hurt to put one to two or even 3% if you're a portfolio manager into crypto? It's only pretty much gone up in the top, well, just take the, just take the top two, Bitcoin and Ethereum, even though it's volatile, has gone up over time. So that's the part where uh, my man here, Lawrence nails it. Here's where he gets it wrong. The downside is that non-stablecoin crypto, even its safest one, is dreadfully volatile. So the word dreadfully, I think is a little bit much, Lawrence, but there is a, a certain um, positivity to what he's talking about here or the correct statement. It is volatile, but not dreadfully. The volatility is what gives it its magic. Because if you don't have too much volatility, what can that really do for your portfolio? Yes, it'd be great if we just went up, you know, 1% every month. And at the end of the month, hey, we got 12%, I mean, in the year we got 
that's not the that's not the magic with what crypto is yes it is volatile but you're going to get an asymmetrical return usually in the long run if you pick the right cryptos i can't help you if you're a portfolio manager and you're picking a crypto asset that's uh ranked number 1247 they, i can't help you but if you're sticking within the blue chip cryptos chances are you're doing pretty good so i think the volatility is what gives it those types of magic as far as its return and i like to see those types of things and then lastly to finish this up uh bitcoin and ether the 90-day correlation coefficient is at a very high 0.8 even though other trounce Bitcoin's return in 2021 is the matter. So really what we, this is just saying what we already know. Yes, Bitcoin is correlated to pretty much everything. As Bitcoin goes up, so does everything else. But in relation to it, you're going to see some that far exceed uh, Bitcoin as it goes up. Solana, Ethereum, Cardano, Avalanche. I mean, those types of uh, plays uh, we've seen just go up. Polygon, Matic. I mean, they've, they've gone up uh, exponentially higher than Bitcoin because market cap so that takes care of that little piece and then also just so you know just to follow this up this is what we talked about yesterday and lawrence is right these portfolio managers need to really take a good look at crypto because as a reminder uh as far as hedge funds portfolio managers hedge funds only three beat the s p 500 three sendvest and paula and srs all the rest of them were below the 28 percent gain that s p 500 did last year so if you're an investor why are you using all these guys? All they're doing is just taking fees from you. Just go to just buy into the S&P 500 and that's it because that's all you need to do. It's just a hedge. It's just a fund. And you don't need these people to tell you anything because you can beat them just by going into a buy and hold situation. Anyhow, that's what we have for that. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Now let's talk about getting ready right now. And when I talk about that, you have to understand that for my what I'm trying to do here is the majority of what I'm doing is I'm DCAing, dollar cost averaging in, I'm going to dollar cost average out, I'm going to take profits, and I'm going to stick to my plan uh, even more so than I did in 2021. I'm going to continue to buy these dips, not just the blue chips. I'm going to get into some very low, low cappers because I think there's some really massive asymmetrical gains. I think you can make a lot uh, in as, as far as in terms of investment, but that's a very small sliver. That's in the gamble and trade section. Mostly what I do is just hold Hold on for dear life and just kind of make it make it go that way. But to do these things, you need to get ready. And to do that, you need to really know a little bit of like on-chain analysis. Uh, me and uh, Kiyun Ju, uh, who is the CEO of CryptoQuant, we did this great video where we talked about these five or six different, uh, six uh, as far as on-chain analysis and what to look for and how to read those charts. And then also, uh, if you're taking a look at like the new projects that are out there, Take a look at my second channel, Digital Asset News Clips. We've gone from everything from Kevin O'Leary's WonderFi to uh, Everdome to uh, Kintsukishi Online and some other different ones that are like the new emerging type of uh, platforms that are out there that could, I think, be monstrous gains. And lastly, if you're looking for just the overall appearance or overall education, just go to Dan Teaches Crypto. It's the thing that spins above my head constantly. It's 100% free. It'll never, I'll never charge you. It'll always be free. And uh, we go everything over everything from like the basics of crypto, safety, because it's not how much you make, it's how much you keep, how you don't get scammed, investing, reviews, like and all the things that we just talked about is like the different products. I put them there also. And then uh, module five is how do I, whatever you think of that you need to do. So uh, link is always in the description, but it's super simple. Dan teaches crypto.com. So check that out. And that I think is a big thing as far as like getting ready, because on days like this, not much to do. Just get yourself prepared for the upcoming uh, year. So let me know what you think about that in the comments. And let's finish up with two articles that I thought were pretty interesting. Blockchain gaming, I think, is going to be huge. Uh, and we've talked about this at length in this channel. If you've got gamers who are uh, just free to play, and now they're saying, hey, we're going to pay you to play. I think they're going to go on that route, but there's a caveat, and I'll get to it in a second. So Square Onyx president talks NFTs, Metaverse, Blockchain, Gaming, and New Year's Letter. First of all, what is this place? This is uh, the company that brought you like Final Fantasy, some other games that I've never heard of in my life because I'm not, I'm not a huge gamer. I'll just be honest with you. I'm just an investor. So all I take a look at is which place and which investment is the best one for me which one has utility which one has pretty great teamwork and if i'm looking at uh, uh different projects what's a tokenomics but i thought it was interesting that square onyx has been around forever 
is now talking about NFTs. So how does that work into you as an investor? I'll get to that in a second. So to fit, to go and get into this, this is from the president of, of uh, Squaronix. He says, uh, as this abstract concept, talking about NFTs, begins to take concrete shape in the forms of products and service offerings, I'm hoping it'll bring about changes that have a more substantial impact on our business as well. And this is a guy, I think, who's starting to realize, like, you know, if this is being asked for, maybe we should get into it. The president pointed that the company is conducting aggressive research and development efforts and investments in areas that include blockchain gaming and AI. Excellent. From having fun to earning to contributing, a wide variety of motivations will inspire people to engage with games and connect with one another. It's a blockchain-based tokens that will enable this. By designing viable token economies into our games, we will enable self-sustaining game growth. And that sounds pretty great. I mean, right there, I'm like, well, that sounds very positive. However, you have to remember, to get the traditional gamer over from one format, gamers are just like the rest of us. They, they like a little bit of change, but not crazy change. And there's a dichotomy going on and I can see it and I can understand why. So what it says here, uh, to finish up, the inclusion of these new elements in traditional gaming has been received negatively thus far by gamers. GSC Game World, a small company, had to recently abandon its intention of including NFT elements in Stalker 2. And Ubisoft, another leading developer, major game developer, faced a similar problem when the, re when the reveal of its NFT marketplace, Quartz, received 95% negative reactions on YouTube. And I get where they're coming from because these traditional gaming companies, they have been squeezing the, the funds out of their gamers for a very long time. Uh, the games cost quite a bit of money uh, for some of them. Uh, but if you're playing like the, like the free to play, it's not so much that cost, that doesn't cost money at all, but to buy things within the game, to buy skins and to buy weapons before you know it, a game that may have cost 40, 50 bucks just cost you 300, 400 that you just poured into it for all these different uh, add-ons that you can't take anywhere that you can only play in this one specific game. So when you've got games where you've already had to pay for it, and now they're going, hey, we're doing this great NFTs. Now I get why the gamers are like, we hate you because you're screwing us because we just bought this game and now we got to pay for all these power-ups. And if we don't pay for these power-ups, then of course I'm going to get slaughtered in this game. That's no fun for anybody. So I don't want to do that. I think these traditional gaming platforms are going to have a real problem convincing these gamers that nfts is the way to do it i think to get away from that stigma these new version of games i mean you'll have like big time and the sandbox and all these different cornucopias you'll have these different pl uh place places go you know what our you know gensukishi and everdome we're not like those guys we started off with free to play and NFTs and we're going to give you these tokens and you can actually earn, earn to play. And there's no real, there's, there's no rug pull or anything like that. Just come in here and play and we'll make this whole ecosystem. So I think these traditional game platforms are going to have problems. Anyhow, maybe we should think about that in the comments. And then, uh, lastly, uh, this one is crazy. I never saw this coming, but here we are. Samsung, the uh, pretty big uh, South Korea company says they're going to announce NFT platform for smart TVs. South Korean tech giant Samsung revealed a new smart TV lineup, uh, which is going to be micro LED, Neo QLED, and the frame will have an NFT platform app that can be used for discovering, purchasing, and trading digital artwork. And they stay with demand for NFTs in the rise. The need for a solution to today's fragmented viewing and purchasing landscape has never been greater. I thought that was interesting that these guys are getting that big into NFTs. The upcoming platform will enable viewers to browse and also trade NFTs without leaving the couch, which, I mean, you can do that anyhow with your phone, but whatever. It's unclear exactly which NFT platforms or marketplaces will be included for aggregation, but uh, this has been actively investing, or excuse me, uh, Samsung has been actively investing in NFT and metaverse projects through its venture capitalist arms, Samsung Next, and the firm participated in an investment round for a metaverse gaming platform. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, that's interesting. How big are they getting into it? Well, if we take a look at Samsung, there's a website called samsung.com forward slash global forward slash galaxy. They have their own wallet, their own Samsung blockchain, simple and trust proven, but it's mostly it's a wallet. They say it's their, their blockchain, but I didn't see anything about the blockchain itself, just wallets. And now you can do all these things and you can use dApps and 
Uh, there's the central land right there and all the different games and so yeah okay keep private gotcha and then also they also have a uh blockchain phone samsung makes it easier to use blockchain and galaxy devices with support for other hardware wallets this is on may 13th so they're really into crypto samsung and then also if you haven't noticed uh theta one of my holds yes i'm biased if you scroll down here and talk about uh, enterprise validator nodes, well, there's Sony, Google, and there's Samsung. So when we kind of try to put the dots together, that's where you want to start to think to yourself is like, where is the hockey puck going? And if you're really thinking about, well, I don't really know where to get into it. If you just go to CoinGecko and you click on categories, when you click on categories, it breaks it all down into smart contract platforms, you know, the Solana, the Ethereum, the Cardano, the Avalanche, something like that, Polygons, Avalanche, blah, 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 blah. And there's one called non-fungible tokens. And if you click on that, it'll tell you like all the non-fungible token platforms. So Axie is the game, Sandbox, sure. There's Theta Network. There's the Central Land. Engine Coin, I think will be a pretty good play. I hold that myself, so that's why. Wax, I don't hold that, but I know... Wax is great for minting NFTs. It's like super cheap and a lot of big, big players are using it. Audius is for uh, NFTs as far as like uh, music. So you can just take your pick and start to do your own research. And that's why it's important to really get into these, to you the research that you can do and get yourself prepared now. And lastly, I just want to leave you with this. I tweeted this out because people are, they were getting kind of ticked off at the whale situation, people getting dumped on, oh, poor is me, woe is me, they're dumping on me. And um, I, it sucks, it's true. But I just said very simply, if you dollar cost average in, you buy the dip and dollar cost average out by taking profits when the price is climbing and not getting too greedy, what difference does it make when whales, what whales do if they dump or pump? You could just piggyback off of what they do and have a symbiotic financial relationship so you're never a victim. So that's investment advice for me. Uh, I can't give you investment advice, I'm not an investment advisor, but that's just the things that I do. Dollar cost average in, dollar cost average out. I take profits along the way. And I don't allow myself to be too emotional. Well, there's a little emotion in uh, investing, but that's it for today. Look, I know it was long, but <laughs> so many things are going on right now. But um, look, if you found a little value in the video, give it a thumbs up. I'll consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about and on this channel are time sensitive, especially what's going on right now. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.